Welcome to Reborn Abroad, your guide to getting a new start at life in interesting destinations all over the world, unlocking easier, lower cost lifestyles with less stress and less complication. Today, we have lots of great information for you on all the new Thai visa updates. Thailand has gone through a massive overhaul of their visa system. They've changed a lot of different things. And I think today's a great day for us to start unpacking some of these changes and bringing you guys up to speed on what's going on in the kingdom of smiles. I am here today with my business partner. He's based in Chiang Mai, beautiful city of Northern Thailand. Uh, he does visa consulting and other legal services for expats who are trying to get set up in Thailand. Even though he's based in Chiang Mai, he can facilitate all over Thailand. So if you have your eyes on a Thai island or on Bangkok, don't worry, we got you covered. So I think let's start off today's conversation with some of the new updates. Uh, what has changed in terms of Thai visas? Thanks, Jay. Uh, thanks for having me today. So uh, I'm Poom, a managing director a 30 years plus visa agency in Thailand. Of course, uh, regarding to your questions, I would say the upcoming uh, visa update for Thailand is the Destination Thailand Visa, which runs in by Thai Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about how that's going to work? For this uh, DTB Visa or Destination Thailand Visa, it's offering the five years visa with the length of stay for 180 days per entry, and it's extendable for another 180 days in the country. That means you are free to stay in Thailand for around uh, 660 days. Okay, with this visa, they just required uh, some of the documents. Let's say you are uh, the freelancers or even the uh, remote worker from overseas. We can apply through that online system to the Thai government website. So now, does that involve check-ins? Do you still have to do normal check-ins with immigration? For this one, of course, we still need to do the 90 days reporting. Once it's uh, coming to 90 days, okay, every 90 days have to report. Okay. Do you have to show a certain amount of capital in order to qualify for the visa? The very first time when we apply for the DTV visa, we have to make sure that we having the savings from overseas at least. Uh, 500,000 Thai baht. Okay. It can be overseas bank as well. Also Thai bank, if you have so. Together with some documents um, of your uh, employment, let's say you are a remote worker. You are uh, able to show your uh, work employment contract. Okay. And your portfolio together with your uh, bank statement saving. And what's the turnover time for something like this? For the application process, it takes only uh, three to four weeks to get visa approved by online. So you can apply from everywhere in the world. Let's say you stay in the UK or in the US, you can do by online, or we helping you to apply to online as well. And once you get visa approved by online, uh, the Thai government will be issuing the e-visa letter from the embassy for you to have it and fly over to Thailand to get the visa stamp at the Thailand airport. And this visa allows six months per entry, so you do need to do a visa run every six months, is that correct? For the first time entry, you will get 180 days. And after that, you can extend at the local Thai immigration office in Thailand for another 180 days without leaving the country. So you don't need and to cross a land border, you can just extend at immigration. Exactly. You can just extend it at the local immigration regarding where you stay. No, that's great. This is a big game changer for Thailand. It also promotes for the digital nomads or even the remote worker who are love to come to stay in Thailand longer. And also we understand that all of them have the online work. So they are free to work in Thailand with the destination Thailand visa also to do the work, whether in Chiang Mai, in Bangkok, or in Phuket, or anywhere in Thailand. We are trying to promote this visa to people who are interested to stay in Thailand, to take Thailand as a second home. Yeah, no, that's a great option. Also, there's been changes to the tourist visa on arrival. 
I know for like the stronger nationalities, we used to get 30 days on arrival. I believe it's now uh, 60 days on 60 arrival. Days. Is that right? Yeah, it is right. For the foreigners to come to Thailand with the visa on arrival, now it's changed to 60 days. And you can still extend for another 30 days in Thailand as well. That will be 60 days plus 30 days. So you get a 90-day visa now just on arrival. You show up on... You know, you show up on your 60 day, but you can extend it now and not need, need to leave Thailand for three months. Can you exactly. convert your tourist visa into this new Thailand destination visa? Uh, of course, you can convert it into the uh, new DTV visa. And once you apply, you can either stay uh, outside of Thailand or you can, how to say, you can apply it uh, while you're in Thailand. But once you get the visa, it's required to maybe fly to some country in nearby Thailand and come back again with the new DTV visa. Okay, so you have you can do the application in Thailand, but you'll need to just cross a border and then mm. be stamped in on the new visa. Yes. Or you can either shoot the traditional way to go visit the Thai embassies to the country nearby Thailand or even back to your country. Let's say Laos Thai embassy in Laos or Thai embassy in some other country around Thailand to apply for the DTV visa at the embassy as well. And with the embassy fee of around uh, 13,000 to 14,000 Thai baht, it's depending on the local exchange list in each embassy. All right. So you guys have lots of different options for staying in Thailand now. You can just arrive and get 60 days, extendable to 90 days. You can apply for this uh, Thailand destination visa, uh, either while you're in Thailand or overseas. Um, has there been any dramatic changes to the retirement scheme or is it still the same? Uh, it's still remaining the same where the retirement foreigner can uh, come to Thailand. Uh, if you are above 50 years old, you can just apply the three months retirement, the three month non-retirement visa from Thai embassy overseas. And then once you landed in Thailand, you can open the Thai bank account and saving money for uh, 800,000 Thai baht. And then you can change to one year retirement visa. The rule still remain the same. And how much capital does someone need for the retirement visa? Of course, they need to save the money in the Thai bank account for 800,000 Thai baht to keep visa extended every year. So as long as the money is in the account, the visa just gets, they can renew it every year. And this, uh, the retirement visa also has 90 day check-ins. Yeah, of course, the retirement visa also has the 90 days reporting. It is required okay. to report every 90 days. So that's universal for all these visas. Yes. And also the LTR visa still remaining the same where they required such a document to those uh, people who working from Thailand or the professionals who working for Thai company and also for pensioner type of uh, foreigner as well for the 10 years LTR. Okay, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how that works, a little bit about the LTR visa for people who are new to Thailand? For the LTR visa, <laughs> 10 years multiple, they are required you to have the income from overseas for 80,000 USD per year. Can be salary, can be your investment income. Uh, plus the investment in Thailand for around 500,000 uh, USD, okay? And also another investment in from overseas for 500,000 USD. It can be real estate investment under your own name, it can be some of the stock investment. Now that's interesting. It's, so the foreigner could have the real estate investment in their name in Thailand? Mostly they only can own the Thailand condominiums where they are 100% freehold not the landed property. So for the LTR, they are required to see your condominium investment in Thailand under your own name for 500,000 uh, USD or around 18 million Thai baht. Are there ways for foreigners if they did want to own land? Like I know in many countries, foreigners can open up a local company and then have that local company own the land. Mm -hmm. Is Thailand the same? Yeah, Thailand is mm -hmm. also, also similar where the, where the foreigners uh, register the company with the Thai uh, shareholders, sharing 49 as a foreigner and 51 for Thais. And then they have a company for 
property investment or for the businesses. And I'm sure there's services where the, you know people can have a Thai partner that signs over maybe power of attorney or like you know any kind of voting rights to you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's legal ways in order to do this safely. If foreigners did want to invest in land or something like this, exactly. As long as they have a Thai partner, they can still uh, work in Thailand, and they can apply for the business visa and the work permit after getting the company. But have to re remember that they are the Thai laws required for Thai employees to be supporting one foreigner for doing their work permit. So if you were to open up a company as a foreigner, do you need to employ a certain amount of Thai people? Of course, uh, after getting the company, you have to hire four Thai uh, employee staff to work under you as a work permit. It is required. Okay, so is this a good option for, for people who are looking to stay long-term in Thailand, setting up a company? Uh, if they're actually looking to do something, right? Like the company would need to actually function, right? Exactly. Uh, this is one of the options for the foreigners who are looking for the long-term working plan in Thailand. The company has to have an actual uh, businesses and hired uh, the Thai people to work under the company. Or if you consider the DTV visa five-year multiple, then you can work from Thailand as the remote worker. That's another plan. And if you wish to stay in Thailand even longer for living life, for retirement, you can decide for the Thailand privilege card or elite visa uh, as long as you wish to stay in Thailand. Now, there's a lot of different types of elite visas. I know there's some for five year, 10 year. There's some that come with special perks. Um, are there specific elite visas that are very popular at the moment? Like, are there ones that are more popular than others? What's the most common elite visa that people are choosing? Mm -hmm. Of course, for the most uh, popular uh, package for the elite visa now is about the five year with the membership fee of 900,000 Thai baht for the five years elite visa. They have a, uh, four types of elite visa. The first one is a gold membership. For five years, uh, 900,000 Thai baht, okay? And the second one is called Platinum Membership. It costs 1.5 million mm. for the 10 years. And the third one is called the Diamond Membership. It costs 2.5 million to stay in Thailand for 15 years. And the last one is the Reserve Package, where it offers you uh, 20 years for the 5 million Thai baht. And most people are going for the five year. That's of the course. more common. Yeah, that's the more common because it's the most cheapest uh, choice. And also it's the shortest uh, option that we have the five year. Right. So that way, if, if things change or their plans change, they haven't made a 20 year commitment. Exactly. And with the elite visa application process, it only takes around one to two months to get the application approved and pay the membership to the Thai government and be ready to affix the visa at the Thailand airport. But uh, at the first time you start application process, you will be uh, paying for the deposit of uh, 50,000 Thai baht. Where this 50,000 Thai baht will be deducted to the membership fee after you get approved by the Thailand privileged company. Let's say you paying for 900,000 Thai baht for the five years elite visa, and after it approved, you only had to pay 850,000 Thai baht. So the deposit is already deducted to the membership. Now, with all the changes that have recently occurred, has there been changes to the elite program or is it fundamentally the same as it's been? Basically, this year we got the new prices, just, just what I told you. And for the requirements, still remaining the same. And uh, hopefully there will be some good news for the elite visa update in the near future in terms of packages and services in order to improve the program to serve the customer even more better. So the Thai government at the moment is very focused on bringing the foreigners into Thailand. Exactly. Through DTV visa, LTR, or even for the elite visa. And of course, there are different objectives for each visa. Let's say for DTV, they are focusing on digital nomad or remote worker who wish to stay in Thailand for five years with multiple entry. For the LTR, they are mainly focused on those professionals who are working for the company in Thailand or those who have a 
long-term contract work from overseas also can work from Thailand. And the last one for the elite visa or for those who wanted to retire long-term in Thailand with the privileges, let's say airport services and more uh, facilities in Thailand. So really, even for the bottom of the market, it's it's become easier. I mean, even for people who are coming doing visa runs, now they're only needing to do visa runs every 90 days rather than every you know two months. It's quite, you know, it's it's quite obvious that Thailand has a very open policy towards foreigners at the moment, while other countries in Southeast Asia are still conflated and confusing. If you want to stay long term, Thailand has made a lot of different options for foreigners who are looking to stay in Thailand long term. Yes, exactly. We are more and more open for our foreigner friends to come over in Thailand uh, to have a freedom in lifestyle. And we're giving the facility in terms of visa to stay longer, the lifestyle, and to support our tourism economy as well. And I'll tell you guys, Thailand is hard to beat. You have good infrastructure, good healthcare. You have good, you know, in the cities like Bangkok, you have good metro, good transportation. Uh, Chiang Mai, you have a good airport that is getting more and more destinations. You can now get direct flights to lots of different destinations in Southeast Asia that years ago would have been more difficult. So the whole country is just becoming more and more accessible. Let's talk a little bit about some of the changes around the cannabis industry, because this is a big question. I think a lot of people that I speak to want to know. A lot of foreigners are very interested in getting involved in this industry. Uh, and then recently, there's been some big changes in terms of the law. Can you kind of bring us up to speed on what's going on over there? Of course. Uh, as we understand this last few months, there is a rumor or even says a new saying about cannabis will be will be canceled again the law of course i was i would say that until nowadays the cannabis laws are still going on so uh, many foreigner friends they are coming over to thailand to have a cannabis extract factory or even the dispensary now still working on that so the rules and the situation still remain the same our cannabis industry it's still increasing in terms of uh, medical uh, reasons, in terms of uh, entertainment, but overall still the same. And we expect to see that more and more uh, in terms of medical trends for uh, cannabis. So it, it, hasn't, it hasn't been uh, nullified or canceled. Like that's some of the rumors that are going around is that they've, they've stopped the industry. And that's not true. It is not true. Okay, for for the for the recent moments, it's not true because uh, what they try to do is to to see the opportunities to adjust the law, whether they can turn it to the professional side where every dispensary, where every people can maybe have a license for the for the uh, the right purpose in terms of using cannabis. So we are all waiting for the updates but now still remaining the same. So they're probably going to regulate it, not necessarily cancel it. Of course, you're right. They're probably going to regulate it more. And of course, to giving chances to to foreigners or even, or even to ties to, to, to do the businesses. Would you say it's a dangerous time to invest in the industry or is it okay now? I think it is still okay now to invest it into the cannabis industry, whether you like to open up a, new dispensary in Chiang Mai or in Bangkok, but just have to understand that what the market is needed the most. Maybe the trends of the market today, they just wanted the cannabis to be the medical, then you can support them, uh, uh, support to the demand. Right. So you need to be flexible because the government could decide to make this a medical you know, requirement where they may need to get some kind of a card from a doctor or something like this could, in theory, we're not saying this will happen, but could happen. So you need to be able to be somewhat flexible if the industry suddenly makes a change. Exactly. Then we have to be aware of the, the, the updates rule and how the government's gonna, uh, gonna manage it. But of course, they will be still remaining the same, but just to be uh, regulated. Yeah, I kind of thought, you know, the party wasn't going to last forever. At some point, they're going to regulate the industry. I mean, I feel like this is inevitable. Can you tell us a little bit about, like, say, for example, a farmer was looking to open up a dispensary or some sort of a cultivation, you know, project. 
Uh, in terms of paperwork, cost, and bureaucracy, what does that process look like? The process is when you try to start a company in Thailand where you needed to find a Thai partner for sharing your 51% in the company and the foreigner holding the 49 And then we will register a company in Thailand with uh, going to register few of the extra extra the licenses for the cannabis business and also for the health uh, department for the licenses. And of course, we will see what types of the businesses you like to go for. Are you going to be the cannabis for the medical, the cannabis for the some other reasons? Then we can apply for the each category. So the processing is going to be similar to the business setting up but with extra licenses that we have to complete it. Okay, so just it, it requires a little bit more licensing, uh, but essentially it's the same as if you were to open up a company in Thailand yourself. Exactly. You still need the Thai partner to work together with you to run the company such a dispensary shop in Thailand. And can you guys help with this process from start to finish? We can help to setting up the company and to find the location and to suggest what kind of businesses or services you have to provide under your business and also to recommend what are the licenses that you have to manage to get and also the taxation services uh, by year. This is very important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's a, a huge change that, that Thailand had introduced legalized cannabis so I know a lot of people who are watching would want to know what's going on with the industry and does it make sense to come to Thailand and invest in the industry? Uh, because for the last, I guess, like year or so, there's been kind of a question as to like, what's going to happen with the industry? Is it going to become regulated? Is it going to become illegal? Is the government going to try to roll it back? So it's nice to see that things are still kind of continuing the way they have been. Exactly, because they are... They're not gonna uh, stop the 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 regulation, but they try to to be adjustable to be to be sure that every sectors are are okay with this. Yeah, and hopefully the business still going on uh, according to the tourism trends and also the visa uh, regulation where it's open to every foreigner to come to stay in Thailand even more uh, more easier than before so when it's so when a foreigner opens up a company like for example if they wanted to go into the cannabis industry and open a dispensary is there a visa that will be associated with that that allows them to stay and operate their company mm -hmm. of course uh if you talk about open up a company like dispensary in thailand of course after getting the company and licenses we will go through the process where we're getting the long-term visa such a business visa and the work permit for the foreigner and of course, we need four times people to be supporting your work permit as, uh, let's say, four times employees, for example. Is that even if you have a Thai partner, you still need to have the four Thai employees? Exactly. Because uh, the, the Thai partners, they are only be your shareholders, cannot be supporting your work permit. So that's why you have to find at least four Thai employees to be supporting your your work permit. You guys can help with uh with all the all the paperwork around that, like the, you know, whatever needs to be filed with the government in order to get the work permit. And yes, we uh, help to find. Uh, we have to prepare st uh, starting from the first step to gather all the document and then to register the business license and all the licenses that it needed, and also to make sure that the company is running uh, year by year with having the taxation service taxation services as well. Oh, so that's great. So you guys also provide like accounting and taxation services. Yes. So it's like a one-stop shop for everything you need to open up a business in Thailand. Yes, and also for the long-term visa in Thailand as well as we can help you to go through the processes and make it more easier to live in Thailand. So you have lots of options now, guys, you know, even compared to a couple of years ago, it's become much easier if you want to stay, live, work, or do business in Thailand. Does Thailand still do education visas? Are those still a popular choice? The education still visa still doing and also uh, becomes, become uh, and just one of the options that, that the foreigner considered since we have a uh, many new visa in Thailand uh, coming up right now 
So there's still options for the foreigners to to choose. Yes. So there's just more and more choices now. So you can、mm. either go through a Thai language course, you could do a Muay Thai course. There's all、exactly. kinds of other Thai courses that allow you to stay in Thailand for the duration of the course. But if that's not enough time, you have digital nomad visas. You can invest. You can set up a company. So there's a lot of different ways now that the Thai government's made it easier and more straightforward for foreigners. Exactly. And then we are helping to to give you、uh, advice for for which visa option, for which kind of investment, which kind of long term plan you wanted to have in Thailand. We are happy to. Help you to go through that. What kind of capital is someone looking at if they wanted to set up a small business in Thailand, like a dispensary or something like that? How much would you recommend that someone needs to get something like that going? Basically, we have to see what are the cities, what are the location we wanted to go, what the markets look like,、uh, and what are the capital、uh, gonna be suitable for the for the for for the investments. Okay, but at least you should. You should have few capital. I I wouldn't say like million or two millions high part that would be enough. But I would like you to go to the market to see what the trend, to see what people are willing to to buy your services, your product, and we can give you an advice of for case by case as well. This is the same whether or not you're not interested in the cannabis industry, but maybe you want to have a real estate business. Um, so again, it's about doing some market research, but I imagine you guys can also help with market research and can kind of give the foreigners some insights into, you know, what things might cost in certain markets. For sure, we will help our clients to to determine to see what are the、uh, scenario in the business. Can be、uh, the expenses going to be happen during the business year?、Uh, what are the concern? About the market, what are the concern about the businesses? So we will help to go through that as well. Are there any visas that result in any kind of residency for foreigners? Is that possible in Thailand? Is it possible for foreigners to have any kind of like status in the country? Basically, at the moment, it's、uh, still a little bit difficult for foreigners to become like PR or even the Thai citizenship. That's why we are promoting long-term visa in state. So at this point, it's very difficult to get any kind of residency or any kind of long-term status. It takes, right now, the best option is like elite visa. Exactly, the best options could could be a DTV visa, LTR, or even elite visa for the foreigner to choose to stay longer in Thailand. Do you see that changing at some point, or do you think that that'll kind of continue to be unaccessible? I think that will be that will be remaining the same. As the Thai governments wanted to only promote the long-term visa instead of offering the citizenship program or something, unlike other countries. Yeah, no, very interesting. It's it's a very big change because there was a lot of questions during the pandemic as to what was going to happen in Thailand after the pandemic, and now we see more and more that the government has taken a stance of、uh, you know come in, you know bring capital, we'll find ways for you to stay. Um, you know, other countries in Southeast Asia, it's more conflated, it's more complicated.、Uh, Thailand system, it's almost like a menu of options. There's a lot of different ways in which you could stay in Thailand legally. Exactly, and that's why we are here to、uh, giving you a support information for the long term visa. So now it's a time for everyone to come to Thailand with different type of visa, the TV, LTR, or even elite visa. It's really depending on your needs. But of course, in Thailand, Thailands are welcoming everyone. And how does it work with partnership? If someone were to marry a Thai person, do they? What's the visa that they get after they get married? After a foreigner get married with a Thai、uh, person, can be Thai spouse. They are willing to have a Thai marriage visa for one year after getting married. So it is required you to show the Thai bank saving for around four hundred thousand Thai baht in order to get the one year marriage visa. In Thailand, and they renew this every year. Is that how it works? Exactly. It it works similar to the retirement visa, where you need it to show your savings every year in order to extend your yearly visa. Okay, so there's really a tremendous amount of ways that you can stay in Thailand if you guys want to stay.、Uh, I just want to remind everybody this video is brought to you by Safety Wing. What's up, guys? I'm in Mysore, India. I'm chilling with this cow here. If this cow were to give me mad cow disease, 
I would want to have health insurance. And if you're going to live as an expat, you're going to want to have health insurance too. He's either biting me or licking me. He's licking me. Aww, hello. You're so cute. See, if I get if I get sick from touching this cow, I want to have health insurance, right? So Safety Wing is a good health insurance for people like me who travel around the world and live in interesting places. I'm covered. If I get sick in India, at least I got health insurance. Safety Wing is designed for people who move around and who travel, so it's the perfect health insurance for people who live our kind of lifestyle. And yeah, guys, if you're thinking about coming to Thailand, you can reach us on the Facebook fan page, Reborn Abroad. We can help connect you to our business partners here in Thailand, help you get set up. We charge a one-time consulting fee, and then we connect you to an extensive network of service providers in Thailand. Our partners here can do almost anything you would need while you're in Thailand. They can get you off of a blacklist. They can get you out of jail. They can get you to set up a company. They can help you with long-term visas. They can help you with your marriage visa, just not finding your wife, but they can help you get legal once you do. Uh, so we have lots and lots of different connections here in Thailand that can help make your relocation a lot easier and a lot smoother and a lot more painless, especially if you're struggling, you're working in the West, you're doing something you're not happy doing, maybe you're working too much, you can come to a place like Thailand, establish a small business, and you can have a lifestyle that would be very difficult for you to have in the West for the same amount of money. Can you tell us if there's been any major changes that we've missed today that we haven't discussed? Has there been any updates or things that have gone on in Thailand that you think that foreigners really should be aware of? Of course, uh, for the visa rules, the free visa is uh, changed to 60 days. So you are free to come over to Thailand with the 60 day visa with another 30 days extension. And of course the DTV visa just now, the topic we've been through the video is uh, very interesting for, for everyone. So make yourself aware of this and asking us more for any more details. Yeah. Great. So no, no, no other big changes, just more relaxed, the more relaxed visa policy at the moment. Uh, the current trend of the Thai government seems to be pro foreigner. They want the foreigners to come in to bring capital. Um, exactly. They've made it so you know foreigners do have access to the cannabis industry. You do need a Thai partner. There, there is paperwork that's going to be involved. You need to employ a certain amount of Thai people, but you are welcome to come and be part of this growing industry. Exactly. Well, I wanted to thank Poon for his time and for coming out to see us. And um, thank you for taking the time to speak to everybody and bring everybody up to speed on what's going on in Thailand. Look for us. We're going to do more content like this. We're going to kind of try to bring you guys updates whenever there's something new and something relevant. So once again, if you're thinking about investing in real estate, if you're thinking about opening up a company, if you're thinking about getting into the cannabis industry in one way or another, if you're thinking about just living in Thailand on a retirement visa, on a long-term visa, if you need help finding you know, long-term housing, purchasing property, if you need help with re blacklist removal or any kind of legal issues, you can reach us on the Facebook fan page. We can connect you to our local Thai partners if you decide to work with us. And uh, we also offer services for other countries in Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand. Uh, I'm presently in South Asia building a network here as well. So we are going to have a global consulting service for expats looking to leave the West, leveraging their strong passports and their capital to have a better life and to uh, you know take part of globalism, guys, because whether you like it or not, the world is global. And more and more people are moving to different countries and they're finding their position and that can be you. Are you thinking of living, working, or investing in Thailand? Thailand is an amazing country that's more open than it has ever been before. They are a country that's looking into the future and doing some really radical things. It's an amazing time to be in Thailand and there is a tremendous amount of opportunities for somebody who has an open mind. Who you deal with in Thailand will determine your experience to a great extent. If you do business with the wrong people, you can end up losing money and even in legal trouble. We have the contacts that you need to help you get on your feet in this amazing country and avoid all kinds of drama and problems that could come about by doing business with the wrong people. If you're interested in investing, working, employment, contacts for visas, contacts for housing, contacts for real estate, we got you covered.